Uh, today we're going to do a tour of our shop. Uh, we refer to the shop and the lab separately, and that's because they, they're separate. The lab is at my home. That's where we hang out most of the time. We do our small stuff. We have our more hardcore electronic stuff set up there. The heavier stuff, the more in-depth, the welding, more heavy fabrication we do here at the shop. Now I'm real fortunate having a nice workspace here at the shop. Uh, a couple of guys work with me here that's in the club. Uh, there's one guy that's worked with me here that's no longer working here, but we've all had a good time. So let's, well, I'm going to take you through, show you some of the tools. This is my personal shop, although I do work for a company and I use my tools for that company. But this is my personal shop and we all get to use it. And we're real, real lucky to have this space. Uh, we got it divided into several rooms. It's just the nature of the beast with this building. Uh, the first room we call the machine room. And this is where we have our lathes, milling machines, more like machine shop type tooling. Uh, this is our mill. That's a 1966 Bridgeport. I restored this thing years ago. It doesn't look like it now. And most of these machines don't look like I restored them now because they've been used. But this machine was pretty rough when I got it. It came out of a factory, typical factory, stuff like this. I didn't do any of these myself. It's typical stuff from a factory. Uh, we got a little sandblast area over here, just a small cheapo sandblast box, but it does us well. We got some supplies here, our machining stocks and plastics, aluminum, steels, and some of the tooling for the, the milling machine and lathe there. And sitting down there is our little Atlas Shaper. That's one of our next projects after we get the LeBlonde finished. It's going to be a nice little addition to the shop. Our old Craftsman made by Atlas lathe over here that we've used for years and not a very heavy duty machine, but we've certainly figured out how to use this machine to our advantage. This is a 1956 machine. It was in pretty rough condition when we got it. And if you'll notice, there's the collet rack we did a video on back there was for this machine. Check back, check with our past videos on that. You'll see that we did a video building that collet rack. And of course our LeBlonde over there that we're still working on. I haven't had a lot of time to work on it lately. We will finish that video series, I promise. This is our 43 LeBlonde. It's going to be a much better, heavier machine than that Atlas, Craftsman Atlas over there. I just kind of got it sitting together, mocked up. And there, there's Tommy wandering through. Vagrant. Vagrant in the shop, vagrant in the shop. I miss it, man. Yeah, Tommy has went on the greener pastures. He's took up a more, more electronics-based career, which is what he really wanted to do anyway. This toolbox here is just tooling for the mill and lathe. So this cart rolls around. We can take it to a machine, and it's, it's just tools for the lathe, for the mill, various stuff that we use a lot. So we, we got it right there in front of us drill bits, oils, chucks, collets, just various stuff that we would use frequently when we were doing a machining operation. Grinders just for sharpening tool bits for the machines in here. Uh, we got three different values of stones and then we got a green stone to sharpen carbide with. And we got another sharpener over here that does chisels, drill bits, planer blades, we don't use that one very much, but it, it's handy when we need it. In the middle of the room, we got one of my favorite things that I was lucky to get, a nice Starrett surface plate there. <clears throat> I got this one at an auction for a really good deal. I'm real, real proud of this one. We, we did have a very small one, about a 12 by 18 before we got this. This is a 24 by 36. And this is a lab grade double A surface plate and we've got another vagrant coming in in the shop here oh, cameras. <laughs> and we got the little 20 ton press back here that it's not a very expensive one but it does what we need to do this is a most of you know is a parts washer but we actually have this full of penetrating oil and this is you don't see this much in a shop but we can put stuff in here and just let it soak there's several several gallons of penetrating oil in there 
the pump still works we can let it just spray on the parts walk away let it soak into stuff parts washer over here that's your standard parts washer with we use the zep industrial purple in it we, we seem to like that pretty good it, it works good for us and we got our what i call the scrub band saw for cutting plastics and odd stuff that we would normally we cut aluminum on this too it'll slow down enough to cut aluminum we don't do any good woodwork or anything with that this drill press here is dedicated just for countersink and deburring a friend of mine showed me a trick of just having a cheap drill press just for that we leave this countersink in it all the time and we can quickly deburr a hole or countersink something don't have to worry about chucking it up it doesn't take up much floor space in our to finish out the parts washing area we've got this is our main sink which is as you can tell is just a bathtub raised up i've built a frame for this very handy you can put large stuff in here this piece actually actually lifts out where you can put big panels or something in here and wash them a uh, very very handy thing to have in a shop is a big basin of some sort to wash parts in here's probably the most important part the the coffee station and the microwave most important part of the shop right there and that's that's kind of all the machine room we step into what we call the main room here where we have more storage for materials a lot of our fabrication and general purpose stuff is in here uh, we got a chop saw just for rough cutting um, stock there over here we have our general purpose grinder eight inch grinder a buffing machine wire wheel that little dremel that's mounted there is also we use as a buffing machine for little tiny stuff we just have that with a small buffing wheel in it and we got our general purpose drill press over here with our bit storage there beside it where it's easy to get to and we have sander and a machine that i don't know if i'd recommend anyone building one of these or not but it's been handy for us just a handheld cutoff machine uh, i am not at all responsible if you build one of those for anything that might come with that and we got the little arbor press that we use quite often just a, a number one a little greener to armored press there arbor press uh, pipe vise small disc sander the red toolbox here is just stuff for the drills We've got all of our hand drills battery drills various bits attachments for the drill press other bits and stuff drill gauges things of that nature here for just for drill press and hand drilling this toolbox here this is a 50s craftsman toolbox that i got a good deal on i really like this these old tools if you haven't noticed this is mostly this is part of our body work i have a lot of body work dollies in here and little things that we've made dollies and such to remove dents and work out the body work and panels trim hammers we, we straighten a lot of automotive trim uh, refrigerator trim stainless stuff here this is little hammers to do that and various little dollies and tools we've made to straighten and back up for automotive style trim shop anvil this is what most people would call an asso an anvil shaped object it is although i am pretty sure this one's cast steel instead of cast iron this is an american made one and it seems to act more like cast steel than cast iron it actually has some rebound to it but we use it for a shop anvil you know it gets dented up cold steel gets hammered on that and we got an array of hammers these are our basic shop hammers we use on a regular basis move in the more fabrication type area we got a nice shear here made in england this will cut eighth inch flat stock like it's nothing and we, you can also cut sheet metal it's not really throatless but it will cut you can make long cuts in sheet metal a little bypass we use this quite often the old harbor freight shrinker stretcher super cheap works great i can't complain with the harbor freight shrinker stretcher uh, and I'm not being a poster child for Harbor Freight, but this is also Harbor Freight, this bead roller kit, although we have done a lot, a lot of upgrades on this one to get it to work good. Uh, tons of upgrades on this machine to make it actually function the way it should be. Uh, no shop will be complete without a good bench vise, in my opinion. 
This is a Pony brand, eight inch bench vise. I don't think I could function without a bench vise in the shop. And this, this is where we do most of our handwork. This toolbox is, once again, we do, we do a lot of sheet metal work. You know, punches, nibblers, letters and number stamps, hole punches there. Uh, these are some dollies we've made for T dollies to clamp in the vise for different one-off jobs, probably never use them again. Punches for gaskets, seamers, stuff of that nature. Vice jaws. Uh, wood chisels that are dedicated for cutting metal. Don't use your good wood chisels. There's some punches, some eyelet tools there. This toolbox here is all just taps, dies various sizes, shapes, easy outs, stuff of that nature to remove screws, fix threads. And this is all for pipe thread here. This whole toolbox is just a tap and die kit. Swedge block, we just got that a few months ago, but we've, we've actually used that a lot for shaping. Uh, I think this one, this one's about 100 pounds. We use it more, I built this table in the traditional style where you can actually set the block down in and utilize the faces of it. And if you're, you can go right back. This of course is double sided. You can go back and use the surface if you need to. Now I've got a little planishing hammer and English wheel. These are both, once again, they're both Harbor Freight. And you can see some of the We've had to do some upgrades. These do move a little bit if you're doing serious work with them. So we've got a cable to keep it from flexing. This cable will move if you need to do something deeper. On this English wheel, we also got a rubber piece of rubber inner tube here that we can actually flip down over this wheel. To... There's a lot of YouTube videos on the English wheel out there. I won't bore you with what this is for. Go look them up. Some good, good guys that can teach you better than me mumbling about it all day. Over here we got, this is actually uh, a piece of equipment from the jewelry industry that they use to flatten or emboss stuff. They roll it through these rollers, but we roll stuff, uh, metal through here and make shims sometimes with this. Flatten out wires, you know, draw them out a little bit. We got, these are nice, these are old tinsmiths tools. We got a few of these, it's actually a burring machine. We use these to, fabricate certain things. This is a manual spring winder. If we need to make springs, we make these arbors. This is, I make these arbors out of drill rod. This is just a one drill rod. I don't even, you don't even have to harden it. And this one actually makes a tapered end on a spring here. And you just wind the spring wire around. This is all spring wire here. We use stainless steel spring wire. This is where we have most of our mechanics tools, mechanics type tools. It's kind of a hodgepodge of toolboxes I've collected over the years. And just You just need a place to store. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to match. You just need to keep your tools organized, the way I feel about it. This is a tubing roller and a, a pipe bender. Uh, there is a difference between tubing and pipe. Remember that. Sandbag for hand shaping panels. Uh, you know, we, we can start here doing some hand shaping and then move on to the English wheel to smooth out or planishing hammer or even the the stake tools here I was real fortunate to get a hold of a this is not a name brand stake plate but it is an old one and some hollow mandrels and I use this a good deal now and this is my original that I built as most people would know that's in the business these stake plates find a good one here they have a tapered shank fits in here and it holds it pretty pretty solid I mean there's there's minimal movement to those and there's a whole assortment of different ones before I had this these are generally expensive if you can find them and the stakes are expensive I made this one and was make, making a lot of my own tooling and it's just a straight piece that your tooling fits in you just go Go to the welding shop you can build this pretty easy don't think you have to have this i've used this setup i have a ton of 
different stakes for this one for years and I still use this one probably more than that because I have more for this and I have more specialized versions that I've made for jobs I need or jobs I do often uh, like like this one this was just trailer hitch balls welded on where I can shape around two different sizes there's, there's a lot of different stuff you can do round bars this is real easy to make I would suggest making one of those if you're wanting to get into metalworking you don't have to have this of course we got all of our most of our body hammers on the back here which if you've watched our hammer video you'll see most of the setup here in that video over here we have our welders and everything for the welders that is contained on in this toolbox here our welding table which this was a machine table out of a factory but it works good for a welding table it's cast iron the spatter doesn't really stick to it a lot we have our our mig it's just a 115 volt mig but it does most everything we need to do if it's any heavier than that we usually use the stick welder we got the tig welder and we got the torches we've we've covered most of our bases with that we do not have a plasma cutter as of yet we would love to get one as funds see fit and this little table here is real handy this is actually a, a truck axle and bearing end welded to a drive shaft and a wheel and I made this tabletop which you can actually change when you cut through it and it pivots and it has a lock on it it's a neat little project when you're learning how to weld and I think the last piece of equipment in here we haven't talked about is the metal braid this is just a grizzly four foot metal brake with the removable teeth if you're if you're going to get one of these metal brakes i would recommend one that you can remove the teeth if you're making a box or something you can really remove some teeth and have that extra bending capabilities there and now we'll go into the next room which is our like assembly room and wood shop which is kind of cluttered right now with stuff there's our assembly carts that we use to put jobs on and keep them organized and our assembly shelves we've got some stoves and refrigerators are working on right now these are antiques this is actually my primary job is restoring antique appliances a little workbench here where uh, chase actually works in this area mostly this is his toolboxes and his work area tonight's project actually at the meeting we're going to finish taking this wheelchair apart that we there's a video of that up where we started it and we're finally getting around to taking it apart and this is kind of the wood shop we got a scroll saw a wood lathe there our chop saw which was probably the most used tool in the wood shop and this is this is the old version of the dewalt double bevel compound miter saw sliding 12 inch with our wood scrap under here are small pieces we use table saw kind of the centerpiece of the room is 1960 craftsman it's made by king Seely, and it, it's it's actually a nine inch blade table saw which we've not had a problem finding nine inch blades uh freud actually makes these nine inch blades that i like a lot it's been a really good table saw we got most of our smaller electric hand tools over there our circular saws stuff like that jigsaws routers all just kind of stored over there uh, over here we got planes hand saws most all of these are vintage I'm, I'm a big fan of the vintage tools i find these and restore them except the shop vac shop vac's not vintage the, the rigid that's down there on the floor that is not vintage although it is a good one it has a lifetime warranty and i i'm all for that the little shaper here little wood shaper we don't use that a whole lot it's a craftsman i think this is an emerson which is not the the best craftsman stuff but it works okay for us old delta sander it's been a this thing has been a workhorse it is about worn out now we have to kind of we're we'll to machine some parts for it you fight it a little bit to keep the belt tracked properly but this thing still is probably daily use this thing sees this is 48 i believe that's when that old delta was built came out of the same factory i got my milling machine out of grizzly bandsaw that's our better woodworking bandsaw 
it, I really like this saw. It, it's a grizzly, but it, it's it's an older one, and we we really like this saw. It actually works really good for for what it is. You got a a joiner and a planer. These are smaller, but we don't really do a whole lot of heavy work in here, so these work out pretty good. And then we got our rack of finer wood. There's kind of a mixture there. We got. We got our oak, we got walnut here, some maple, some mahogany, cedar, some cypress down there, another big chunk of oak. This is our better woodworking materials over here. This is our our office area per se. It's kind of stuck here in the middle of the wood shop. Nothing much to say about an office. Probably the most used seat in the house though. And then Behind that is our reference section, our library, reference books. It covers almost everything you can imagine. And we got our drafting table sitting in our office area. We do, honestly, we do mostly wiring diagrams on this. It just helps a lot with doing wiring diagrams. It's easy to draw them out when you got a set of drafting arms there. Back here, we actually consider this a separate room. We call this the lab not to be confused with the lab at, our, at my house, but this is the lab part of the shop. And this is our electrical area. This is also where we rebuild clocks and controls. We have a lot of just the test equipment we need here for the job at hand. It's not nowhere near as intense as the lab, or the actual lab at my house, but we have exactly what we need to do the job, and that's what's important. Back there's our, we have wiring station. This is a little fridge where we test refrigerator controls. We can do a dynamic test. We can wire it up in this fridge and actually let it cycle and run. And then we have finally our, our area where we do plastic casting and real lab work per se back here this is kind of a try to keep this area somewhat clean you know, right now there's some dust that needs cleaning before we do anything back here but we do a lot of plastic casting making making new stuff out of plastic with molds and that's that's about it with the shop uh, like i said my main job is i restore antique appliances so we have parts back through here this is this is what we call the dungeon area and it's all just parts for refrigerators and ranges earlier than 1960 and that that part actually doesn't these parts doesn't belong to me this belongs to the company I work for but it is my main job so yeah that's that's a tour of our shop we're real lucky to have this space and I know a lot of you guys don't have near this amount of space and we feel crowded in here but you always need 10% more space in a shop it, and no matter how big your shop is, you're always going to need 10% more space. You're always going to feel like that. So if you're working in a small area, don't feel bad. If you were in a bigger area, you'd still need the same amount more space. 